anyone in this world, anyone, almost anyone you talk to has had a family member or someone that they know struggled with some sort of addiction, drugs, alcohol, whatever it is. Um, and now, you know, it can hit, affect anyone at any point. And you had shared your, we had talked about your struggle with alcohol. Um, and I know, and I guess the question is looking back, how did you eventually get to the point where you're like, I got to get this fixed? Like what, what was, what was what prompted all that? Um, I was a highly functional alcoholic. Um, I was not one of those people who would fall down and slobber and pass out and act stupid and all that sort of stuff. I was highly functional alcoholic, but it became kind of a constant thing. And it sort of creeped up on me. It used to be, you know, Friday and Saturday night. And I was, I was never in the bars. I was never at clubs. It was always at home. Yeah. And generally it was just sitting down to watch a game, you know, and it just became the thing to do. I'd sit down and watch a Red Sox game or a Celtics game or a Bruins game. And I'd have, you know, uh, you know, crown Royal and whatever. Yep. And, and it became kind of habitual. And then it became Thursday nights and Friday nights and Saturday nights. And then it grew larger than that. And everybody who has their come to Jesus moment with alcohol or drugs has to have a rock bottom story. And when you go to rehab, um, you sit around with the 15 or 20 people in your rehab class and you are compelled to tell your rock bottom story. And fortunately, mine was not that bad. I mean, there were people in that room who had had a car crash and it killed somebody. Uh, others had gotten divorced and lost their job and were, you know, virtually homeless or living in some apartment because they lost everything. My, mine was pretty simple. It was opening day 2014. And we were broadcasting live from Fenway Park that morning on opening day. We have Fenway Park Studios. So we're there from 6 to 10. And <clears throat> the game wasn't until 1.30 in the afternoon. And we finished at 10 o'clock. And I go upstairs to the WEI uh, private box where we're looking at the, the ballpark to kill a couple of hours and make some phone calls and, you know, whatever. And I'm sitting up there. It's a beautiful sunlit day. It was after a terrible, terrible winter. And the sun is shining and the sun's on my face and I'm just have, you know, just relaxing and it's going to be opening day. And the lady comes in to start setting up the buffet and she brings in a bottle of um, Grey Goose. And I'd been trying to cut back and I'd been trying to kind of wean myself and I'd gone, you know, maybe a couple of weeks, two or three weeks without it. Cause I, yeah. I knew it was sort of getting out of hand. And I said, Hey, it's opening day. You know, I'll, I'll just have one. And so she leaves and I pour myself one. And then one leads to two and two leads to three. And that's the odd thing about my alcoholism. I, I learned that there are basically two types of alcoholics. There's the one who thinks about it and craves it and needs it and has to battle it every single day, every single minute. That's not me. I don't care about it. I don't think about it. I don't want it. But if I have one, I'm off and running. Yep. So clearly there's this chemical reaction in my body that even if I don't want it, even if I'm not, you know, lusting for that Jack Daniels or Grey Goose, if I have one, it's like, wow, my brain just goes nuts. And so I drank and I drank and I drank. And when the game was over, um, I stumbled out of Fenway Park and I went to find my car and I could not find my car in the parking garage for two and a half hours. And I walked every floor and I talked to the attendant. They tried to help me look for it. And I couldn't find my car and I couldn't find my car. And I had forgotten the fact that when I pulled in at five o'clock in the morning to do the broadcast, the one lot was closed, the one garage was closed, and I had to go to the second garage. And of wow. course, I'd forgotten that by you know five o'clock or six o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah. And I'd put it in a so I wasn't even looking in the right garage for God's yeah. sake. Finally figured it out. And and thank goodness for that two and a half hours, because I think I kind of got a little sober. Yep. Yep. Sad to admit, I drove home that night and realized that something had to be done. So I ended up going to rehab for 30 days and everybody told their rock bottom stories and they give you a lot of information and they tell you all these various things. But the one thing that stuck with me, Derek, was they said, here's the bottom line. You can give up everything in your life for just one thing, or you can give up just one thing in your life and have everything. So if you understand what I'm saying, you can wow. give up, you know, your, yep. your, your job and your wife and your kids and your family and your house and your ability to earn a living for that one thing, booze, or you can give up booze and you can have all those other things. Wow. And that really sort of resounded. With it's me. amazing perspective when you, when you put it that way.